I'm glad you are able to uh, get time to join me on today's lectures again. So today we will be continue from where we stopped the last time, and that was the writing process. So with that one, we learn about what the writing process entails. We were able to discuss it into details to uh, analyze each of the stages, what is uh, expected of us in each of the writing process, and the uh, activities we are supposed to take or undertake in each of those stages. So today we will be um, using that process to discuss this topic diseases of the present age are different from diseases of the past age so we are going to discuss this topic using the writing process so that you 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 will be able to get a sense of how the writing process is used in academic writing so uh, with regards to that topic if you remember uh, we said that the first stage of the writing process is the pre-writing or pre-drafting stage so we are going to begin with the pre-writing stage we analyze it subject to the topic or the discussing uh, question the diseases of the present age is different from the diseases of the past age so in writing on such a topic the process begins with the analysis of the title so um, it is worth noting that the following the title mentioned disease it's worth noting that the title we mentioned diseases from two different eras that's the present age and the past time so that's how you can analyze the topic uh, we are comparing two different times so further the title presupposes difference or uh, dissimilarities in the diseases of the past and diseases of the present time therefore the essay should um, so therefore the essay should be different or uh, and not similarities so if you analyze the topic very well you see that the topic asks us of uh, uh, the difference between diseases of the present age and diseases of the past age so what you are going to write should focus on difference of these two errors and not uh, similarities of two errors so after we analyze the title, uh, we begin to search for information or for um, supporting uh, research to back whatever we are going to say in the essay. So information needed for such a title may include uh, the following. Identifying some diseases of the present age. So we can search for some diseases of the present ages. Uh, like uh, coronavirus, this malaria, uh, SARS, and <laughs> all those uh, diseases that we know are present in this age. And we can, we should also identify some diseases of the past age because we are comparing these two ages. So we can also identify diseases of the past age, say these uh, X, Y, and Z. So, after getting such um, after getting such diseases, so we can also identify some differences in the nature of the diseases, the symptoms, the mode of acquisition, the transmission, the prevalence rate, ease or difficulty of treatment. So that's how we can uh, differentiate between these two diseases. We can differentiate them by its nature or in terms of its cause, in terms of its symptoms, uh, the mode of 
acquisition or transmission and its prevalence rate is ease or difficulty of treatment so these are some of the criteria we can use to differentiate between these two diseases so uh, we are still on the gathering information stage so relevant information about disease may be retrieved from sources like books and journal articles on health and diseases so these are some of the sites that we can get um, information about these two diseases we can get them from journals which are dedicated for health and diseases or medical uh, journals magazines and articles in search for such information students may use internet pages as well as hard copies so we can use we can make good use of the internet and also hard copy so the internet we can search for the journals and the hard copies we can uh, look for magazines and uh, newspapers which talks about diseases so information may also be gathered through free writing and brainstorming so we, we can also just get some cold place some um, uh, quiet place to sit to brainstorm about some disease of the present age and using the criteria we talked about about the nature the prevalence rate the mode of acquisition and uh, uh, mode of treatment you can try to differentiate between the diseases of these two areas so after gathering enough information we move on to organizing the information that we have gathered so the students should organize the information into an outline which will be followed in writing the essay so you have it so at this stage we need to gather the information we need to organize the information in an outline in a way that we will use in writing the essay itself so only relevant information and details should be used for the outline irrelevant or unrelated information should be discarded so in gathering the information we, we may come across um, a lot of information so in this organization stage we, we are going to see if we are going to filter the good ones the um, salient points or the salient information from whatever we gathered to draw our outline to be used in the main essay so after we we, we are um, able or we've been able to organize the information we move on to compose our paragraphs so the student should move to the second stage of the pre-writing process that is writing and or the drafting so this stage so we are we are done with the first stage that is the pre-writing or the pre-drafting stage we will be able to analyze our title we will be able to do research to gather information we will be able to organize our information is gathered so now we move on to the second stage which is the writing or the drafting stage and this is where we are going to compose our paragraphs so at this stage the student begin to write or type the essay with the help of the outline so now we already have our outline we know where each of the information is gathered is going to be we know that this information is going to be in my introduction this information is going to be in my uh, first paragraph this information is going to be in my second paragraph this information is going to be in my concluding paragraph so we use that outline to compose each of the paragraphs in the essay so beginning with the introduction paragraph the essay uh, the student follows the outline to compose the essay paragraph by paragraph and end with the concluding paragraph so as i said so we know where each of the future goes so we use that to compose your introduct uh, introductory paragraph your body paragraphs so remember that the body um, must uh, contain not less than three paragraphs 
then we move on to our concluding paragraph to summarize everything that we have written so the introductory paragraph should use a suitable method of introduction we have discussed this already about the different different methods of introduction so the introduction must include a thesis statement we have discussed what a thesis statement is about so i'm uh, i am sure that you guys will know what uh, we are talking about here so the you must include your thesis statement in the introductory paragraph to announce the thesis central idea so the thesis statement as we discussed earlier is what will uh, talk about the central idea of the essay the introduction must read interesting so your introduction must be catchy it should catch the attention of the reader the introduction may identify or mention the diseases that are going to be discussed so that one is uh, based on the method that you choose uh, you can decide to introduce the diseases that you are going to talk about or you can use a different method to skip this as so um, we are still on the composing the writing stage there could be different ways of composing the body paragraphs for instance it may be possible to discuss the same set of diseases from the past and the present in each paragraph with each paragraph focusing on how they differ in a particular aspect say in terms of symptoms mode of acquisition and treatment so with this one you can choose one disease say uh, malaria then you analyze it in terms of how it, it was acquired in the past ages in terms of how it was treated in terms of how it was transmitted then you compare or differentiate it with how it is acquired at this era how it is treated at this era how it is transmitted at this era so that's one way you can uh, compose your body paragraphs you can choose one uh, particular disease then you uh, differentiate it in terms of all these criteria alternatively each body paragraph may identify different set of diseases from the two timelines and show and show the diff, uh, show how they differ in some respect ultimately the drafting of the essay should follow so uh, one way you can also compose your paragraph is to uh, choose different diseases from all the from these two different um, periods areas to analyze how they are uh, acquired so so say in the first uh, in one paragraph you are going to talk about how those diseases are were um, acquired in in one paragraph you move on to a different paragraph you talk about how those diseases were treated in in the past age and in the present age you move on to a different paragraph you talk about how those diseases were uh, treated in the past age and in the present age so if you see we have different ways of composing our body paragraph so after completing the draft or the writing we move on to another subset or sub stage of the writing or the drafting stage so the student may have to rewrite or revise the essay so this if you um, analyze it this is what the the assignment that you people were given this week was expecting you to give the assignment will ask about uh, the stage in which the rewriting uh, takes place and this is where the rewriting stage takes place it takes place in the writing stage or the drafting stage so in this stage you after writing the uh, paragraphs you may rewrite or revi uh, revise the essay 
Uh, so you do that. You do the revision or rewriting to make sure that the thesis statement reflects the essay. To make sure that the essay is in unity with the thesis statement, that each paragraph is unified, complete, and coherent. So you also revise or rewrite the paragraph to make sure that the paragraph has unity, has completeness, and it also has coherence. So the unity talks about all the paragraphs talking about the same thing. The completeness talks about you exhausting every possible um, uh, answer that will be asked on the paragraph. And the coherence also um, uh, talks about you making use of uh, cohesive devices uh, like uh, moreover, however, all those kind of uh, devices. So you also revise the uh, writing to make sure that they are in logical order and that the overall essay is unified, complete and coherent. So you analyze that from this point, we are talking about intraparagraph unity. And so this one too talks about interparagraph unity, completeness and coherence. And that the method of introduction and conclusion are suitable for the essay. So if every essay based on the essay, you may decide to choose or there is a suitable method that you can use to make your essay sound catchy or interesting so you also analyze that to see that if the essay is interesting so from there we move on to the last stage of the writing process which is the post writing so in the post writing we discuss that some of the activities that you you, you undertake at this stage is proofreading and editing so after rewriting and revision, the student moves on to the final stage of the writing process, namely proofreading and editing. So at this stage, the student should proofread the essay and edit all the errors regarding punctuation, spelling, grammar, omissions, and etc. So with this, if you remember our last uh, lectures, I said now uh, because of advanced advancement in technology things has become relatively easy for us we we have so many online um uh, material that can help us at this stage and notable among them is grammarly so we can after writing the essay you can just upload your essay into grammarly to correct some of these mis uh, omissions and errors like punctuation and spellings and all this grammar and other useful online materials that can help us in our writing we can make good use of them so in some cases proofreading could be done by another person and after editing the essay is re uh, ready for submission so this point is very crucial and is very important not even in some cases it is uh, advisable for you to give your essay after writing the essay give it to a friend to also read through to sometimes you may think you have you have been able to identify all the mistakes but if a different person read it it will sound different to that person and so if the essay sounds different to that person meaning that it's going to sound different to the lecturer or the person or the examiner or the lecturer who is going to mark your paper so it is a good idea for you to give your essay to a friend or a colleague to read through to um, uh, give any feedback relating to the whole writing process this is the end of the lectures thank you for joining see you in the next lectures